Hi, this is Brother Richard, <clears throat> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 393. We're continuing with our lesson titled, Reality Transit. This will be Part 12. We are talking about the tremendous changes that we are about to experience in <clears throat> what we call the beginning of sorrow's era. It will be a time in which the Lord himself will <clears throat> intervene in the affairs of the human race on earth. He's going to pronounce, pronounce a judgment which will lead to a total reality shift. <clears throat> the things that we are currently looking at, the world that we currently live in, <clears throat> is going to radically change. You want to take a look at some of the effects of this change from a scriptural perspective. Scripture indicates when the Lord speaks he will speak his judgment in anger and all things will change. Starting in the heavens and then continuing with the earth. Jeremiah 25 verse 30 Jeremiah 25, verse 30. <coughs> now you pass the scripture. Therefore, prophesy thou against them all these words. And say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily, mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. So this is a judgment that will encompass the whole world. Turn, turn to Joel, third chapter, verse 16. <clears throat> the Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So the whole creation is going to feel the impact of the Lord's shout and his pronunciation of judgment. Now we want to take a look at how <clears throat> this is going to affect changes. Because his word is going to <clears throat> set things in motion to eradicate the current order and institute a new order. Drop down to Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 23. Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 23. <clears throat> when he shouts, the judgment is going to set things in motion. It's going to initiate the release of what is called the fourth kingdom. We call it the fourth empire. It's going to be an amalgam of many <coughs> groupings. Now, we see the, how this is described. Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered, changed from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. This fourth kingdom, this fourth empire, <coughs> is going to initiate a reality that the earth, the human race, has never experienced before. It's going to totally change the topography, the order of <clears throat> life on earth as man currently understands it. <clears throat> it will initiate man's concept of 
the existence of superior beings. Daniel, <clears throat> seventh chapter, or Daniel, the second chapter, we want verse. 43 to 44. Actually, we want to start with verse 40. <clears throat> it gives us the characteristic of this fourth empire. What it's all like. What it's about. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. <coughs> so it's going to be a kingdom which will bring about the ruin, the destruction of the current Adamic order. It's going to fragment whatever comes in contact with, just as iron shatters a lesser element that it comes in contact with. Now, drop down to verse 43. <clears throat> Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, the iron, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So the iron is symbolic of intelligences. We see the pronoun they. It's referring to <coughs> the onset of an alien reality imposed upon the linear reality of the human race. The intelligences that part that are part of this reality are going to immerse themselves <clears throat> in the reality of man and totally dominate man. The reality that we have here now, <clears throat> when it comes in contact with this superior reality, is going to totally be erased. Hmm. It's going to merge and become virtually insignificant because the reality of these superior intelligences are going to totally <clears throat> wipe out man's concept of what he once thought was reality. Verse 44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom <coughs> which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever so what's being said here is this kingdom <coughs> that's going to be imposed on the human reality will endure will continue until it's destroyed at the Lord's coming and him setting up the kingdom of God until that time, it's going to totally dominate all things. Now, <clears throat> we are told that this reality is going to <clears throat> obliterate totally the reality of the human race. We are going to see basically what it's going to effectively be perceived as. <clears throat> it's going to be perceived as a reality in which man cannot obtain attain to, and therefore its inhabitants are going to be received as gods. They're going to be <clears throat> venerated, worshipped, they will <clears throat> utterly be submissive to this imposed 
Empire. Scripture indicates the superior intelligences of the Fourth Empire will dominate the entire Adamic order until the coming of the Lord. It will run its course. The Bible <coughs> gives us a, the identification of it as them presenting themselves as gods. Turn to Daniel 11. It will be an unending parade of godlike beings <coughs> that will take dominion over all things <coughs> and uh, totally eradicate the human order, subjugating it until the return of the Lord. Daniel 11, we want verses 36 to 39. And the king, this is the individual that's going to dominate this <coughs> kingdom. He's going to be the head God. The king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. You will note, you will note, it does not say he will exalt himself and magnify himself above every man. It says above every God. <clears throat> Why? Because men are subject to the gods at this point. It will be the gods that dominate the total reality of this system. The human race is going to be subjected to a slave mentality at the beck and call of the gods. We're going to continue. <clears throat> <clears throat> the king shall do according to his will he shall exalt himself magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods referring to the god of the bible Elohim Yon, the most high and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that is determined shall be done in other words he's going to be allowed free reign over the Adamic order until the coming of the Lord. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. What does that mean? It means he's referring to a God that was worshipped at some point in the past by a certain people who will reappear and be worshipped again by these same people. But this God is not going to acknowledge him. He's going to exalt himself above this particular God. That's a mistake. <laughs> Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. In other words, he has, pays no mind at all to the human order. Male and female, they, they basically reign above human concepts of male, female, sex, that sort of thing. It means nothing to these beings. <clears throat> Neither shall they regard <clears throat> nor the desire of women nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. So what we find the gods, these men that the Bible call <clears throat> the iron <coughs> kingdom are going to take dominion over the earth, dominate it, and then themselves be dominated by this individual. Verse 39, Thou shalt he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. The word strange there basically is a God that is not germane to that particular reality. We're looking at things beyond the concept of human ability to understand. This is a God that inserts himself into <clears throat> the reality of three dimensions where this kingdom currently is, but his origin is beyond the dominion that he currently resides in. That's why he's called a strange God, alien God. A God who does not originate from this reality, nor even the reality of the gods that are dominating this reality currently. 
Thus shall he do in the most strongholds of the strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them, the gods, to rule over many, and he shall divide the land for gain. The word land there comes from the word Eretz, is really referring to the whole world. He's going to divide <coughs> the world, the globe, among new gods that favor him and prop him up so that he takes dominion over the former gods that took dominion over the human race. So what we find here, man, <coughs> because of his foolishness, has disqualified himself from custodianship, authority, running the surface world. It's going to be taken out of his hands and given to fallen beings that are far above his existence. To teach him a lesson, make him subservient. <clears throat> and then ultimately, the God of gods, God of the Bible, is going to assert his authority over all He's going to establish the kingdom of God on earth. He's going to set up the kingdom and put it in the hands of his sons, the saints that have proven themselves worthy of authority, of rulership in the Father's realm, the Father's kingdom. Looking at these scriptures, understand we are heading into this day by each day brings us closer to this reality. As it does, <coughs> the injunction is read the scriptures, prepare your life for radical change, understand when these things happen, no matter how far removed from human understanding, understanding God is in control. It's all according to God's plan. <clears throat> and if we become obedient to God's will, we will have a place, a position, ultimately in God's kingdom. Praise the Lord.